Well, where do you start? Hello all, Mike Ramones here, welcome to another episode of my FM19 Aston Villa save. With FM2020 looming, we are going into the final season of the save. Yeah, I've decided nine years will be enough, and we have yet to win a major, major trophy, unless you count the Europa League as one. We came second this year, we actually lost to Manchester United on the final day of the season. Like I said, it didn't mean anything at all. United had already won the championship by that point. Uh, Glenn Hayes and Corrado Macaro got us the goals, but Marcus Rashford won it in the last minute after we thought that we'd managed to get a last minute equaliser so it just goes to show how good that they are in this save at the moment their overall record they haven't even finished yet and they could break the 100 point barrier so it's like City-esque uh, the way that they've played they won the title we were by head and shoulders above the rest in second place nine points ahead of third place Liverpool with City coming fourth and rounding up the top four actually that's not necessarily true thinking about that because uh, Chelsea could beat United and then go there so that's still up for grabs but Liverpool are qualified uh, again, relegated as West Brom, Burnley and Leeds. And I think it's not really about that this season. Because obviously in the last episode we had our Champions League semi-final defeat. The thing that annoys me most about this season is just it's been a really, really good season. And we still have nothing to show for it. You can tell we choked a little bit in the last couple of months. Here. Until that point, it's like green everywhere you look. And then in the final few months, we just completely fell apart. We are going to go through the awards, though. It's not been a bad season in the context of the fact that we're Villa, etc., etc. It's just there's something about this team that's not quite right that we can't quite get to yet. Uh, end the season awards, then you can look here. This is our main 11. Uh, Mick McWilliams gets player of the year, which is interesting. He did have a spectacular uh, second half of the season. Glenn Hayes in the second with Svetozar Markovic in third. Abel Miguel uh, gets the goal of the season uh, for a, I believe it was like a really, really long distance hit against Watford. Abdullah Hassan is signing the season, which is very good to see. And young player of the season is, of course, Mick McWilliams. If he wins player of the season, then it's likely he's going to win that. Again, we're only expected here, as they say in the review, to actually be in for continental football qualification. We've done that yet again. I mean, you can see here, the thing is that we get to second in, like I think, nine games in, and then we just stayed there the whole season. We were just so consistent, and yet it still wasn't enough to win the league. It's incredibly disappointing. Uh, the squad dynamics update, there are going to be a couple of players I'll probably leave in the summer. I need to make some changes and this is where I need your guys' help. I don't know what we need. That's the honest truth is that I don't know what I need. You consider the fact maybe that we've been missing Antonin Vile for the best part of, like I don't know, six or seven months of the season with injury. He's probably our best player. Um, you take that into account, maybe we could have done a little bit better and he'll be back next season. But there's something that's missing from this team. I looked at the um, reports, and we've got the the third highest goal scorers in the league, and got the second best defence. So we're pretty much nearly there or thereabouts. Is it just a case of United are a bit of a freak one-off, and they're the kind of team that we're just going to have to learn to beat, or is there a bigger issue with the team here? I don't know where I can improve. I mean, the tactics we've got two good ones. We've got the attacking four-four-two diamond, and then we've got the four-two-three-one where we go wide. And maybe it's the wide players in those games that are letting us stand a bit. I love Santiago Gaitan. He always gets loads of assists. But maybe his output isn't quite as good as it could be. So maybe an improvement on the right. Anthony Martial has been really good on the left in his debut season for us. Attacking midfielders, we've got a real big selection. We've got Moore, we've got Navarro, we've got Jerry Tossum. All of them are very good Premier League players. Are we just missing that one truly world-class one? Even the fullbacks this year with Hassan and Fila have improved. So... Maybe it's not that. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Is it maybe my tactics? Maybe do we need to mix it up? Let me know. So we're going to go at the end of the team season meeting. And I'm going to passionately say we're going for the title next year. And they got a lot of people say, can we fix on one game at a time? No, we're going to go for it. So I'm very confident what we can do. And I respect the opinions of those who don't believe that we can. I think that we can. And that's what's most important. And we are going to go for it next year. We've... We've come close now in the last two seasons. There is no reason why we cannot win the title next year. Right, so Villa season review over. And the most important thing now is that we actually have an eye on the World Cup. Yes, I'm still manager of England somehow. I know we haven't touched in quite a lot of how things have been going with England. But here's a basic overview of how we've been getting on. We smashed all the World Cup qualifiers. We got through the Confederations Cup but lost in the semi-final to the USA, which I wasn't too bothered about. Uh, so we qualified, obviously in the Nations League we didn't do too much. And now we have a new World Cup setup. This is the interesting thing, a new World Cup setup. Uh, there are, 
God, how many groups? P. There are God knows how many. A lot. There's a lot of groups. And uh, there's going to be a lot of knockout. In this, we've been given quite a kind group because we've got Congo and Jamaica. But I imagine that this is actually not going to... Well, this is going to even out over there. So all the big guns are probably a very easy groups. I mean, th there's a lot to look forward to in this World Cup. I mean, I'm obviously going to try and first all the way through the tournament. And that'll be... The next episode will be both the group games against Congo and Jamaica. But let's run through the squad that I've taken with us to Spain. No, to USA and Canada. I was looking at the holders, the holders of Spain. So going through from back to front, you've got not really that much in change of like personal and goalkeeping. Butland, Pickford, and Angus Gunn are still our main defenders in this. And we've got a good defensive Leon Wood, who's a youngster from Crystal Palace, playing very well at the moment. You can tell here he's a very very good talent uh, and one I have been keeping an eye on for Villa. Uh, Jamal Lascelles, John Stones, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Declan Rice, Jonathan Panzer, who at the moment unfortunately is a doubt, but he's quite a decent player from Norwich. Uh, I've taken quite a young squad with me, um, naturally, as you would expect. Eric Dyer is still in there because he can still do a job for me, and it's just a good utility purpose. Joe Gomez is still our outstanding defender. As he, I mean, he's nearly in his pomp at the moment. He's absolutely incredible. Uh, Jay De Silva, who's obviously fantastic on this game, playing for Tottenham at the moment, gave us a bit of a run around the other day when we played them. And we've got Ben Chilwell, Ryan Sessegnon, Ross Barkley, Lewis Cook, Craig Healy, another decent youngster. Uh, another one contra the Crystal Palace looks like a pretty good midfielder can play pretty much absolutely everywhere in the centre of the park so again good versatility Jaden Sancho Jesse Lingard somehow has made his way in there uh, Raheem Sterling was obviously in there Emil Smith Rowe who's a very decent player uh, he's going to be in there he's playing at Leicester at the moment in the save Deli Alley Tom Chatfield Phil Foden Harry Kane Marcus Rashford Pete Rigby uh, who's obviously been playing very well uh, Glenn Hazel and I am going to take out Oli Fell uh, who obviously has been playing for Arsenal, but I'm going to remove him from the national squad. And I think we all know who I'm going to bring in. There he is. Mickey McWilliams is in the van. And after a stellar season for us now, let's just hope he gets better. I might even play him and Hazel up front, to be honest. Uh, but you can tell there's a good mixture of experience and youth in there. I don't expect to win the World Cup. I expect us to try and hopefully get to the semi-finals. That is my aim. But obviously it would be magic if in the last year of the save I could also win the World Cup for England. Then I would resign. Uh, actually, no matter what happens after this game, I am going to resign as England manager and I'm going to focus fully on Villa commitments. I'm wondering if that will actually make a difference in the save. It obviously doesn't make a difference to the way that I run it personally and manually when I'm playing. But maybe it makes a slight difference in the save. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, it's a quick run through today. Nothing spectacular. It's more about asking what can I do to make this Villa side better. For me, I'm thinking maybe another class striker in there. Although we've got Marshall, Hazel, Williams, even Roberto Firmino, but he won't be here next year because he was only on a one year contract. I think the midfield's where it needs bolstering. We need to be able to take control of the games more here in this midfield. We're very good against the lesser teams, but I need big players now. Big, big game players. And I'm going to maybe look at the personality more than just the attributes now. I need leaders. I need people that are good in big games. And maybe that's what we're lacking because those are the only times we've fallen down this year. Everyone else we've kind of beaten. There haven't been many kind of slip-ups, as it were. It's only really in the big games that I've actually dropped points. So, with an eye on next year, let's hope that the final year of the save is going to be a successful one. And then we can crack on with FIFA 20, uh, FIFA with FM 2020 when the beta comes out. I'm still a little bit sore about PSG on the, uh, the yesterday, you can tell, you can tell, but hey -o. Thank you so much for watching the episode, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do like, share and subscribe. Sorry it's just a short one, a bit of an overview, but the World Cup is coming up, and until I see you there in the USA, and Canada, and Mexico, stay cool.